Right, now that we've found two values between which the root lies, we know that the root is between two and three in the example above, um, it's now time to have a look at how we can actually find more, more specifically where the root is. Now, trial and improvement works very slowly by sort of sandwiching the root between two values and slowly getting to, to, to where it is. Uh, we need a faster, faster way at A level and that's what we're going to look at now. Firstly, our equation is x cubed plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. We're going to try and solve that. Um, now, the process we're going to use is called iterative procedure. It's, um, it's a numerical method, which basically means we don't use a particular algebraic method. We don't make x the subject and solve in the usual way. What we do is we use an iterative formula, and I'll explain when we get to it what that means. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to, rather unusually, going to make this x the subject of the equation. Now, that is unusual. So to make x the subject to the equation, we take everything else over to the other side. We get x cubed equals 15 subtract 2x. Now this is odd because we've got x on both sides. We're only interested in making this x the subject. Now I'll take the cube root of both sides. We get x equals the cube root of 15 minus 2x. Now we can't solve this using normal algebraic methods because of course we've got x on both sides of the equation and there's no way of making x the subject in the usual way. Um, certainly not at A level anyway. But what we can do is we can draw of two graphs, one of y equals x and one of y equals this cube root of 15 minus 2x, which I don't quite know what it looks like, but it's the principle that counts here. If we drew a graph of y equals x, we know that that would look like this. It's a straight line. And if we drew a graph of y equals the cube root of something, then it would look not a straight line, it would look something like that, I'm making it up. Uh, we know that there's a solution where they equal each other, in other words when this first equation is true, when they equal each other between 2 and 3. And what we've got to do is we've got to find the exact location when these two graphs intersect. That will be the same as saying when this equals 0. What I've done on this next page is drawn a graph using Geometry Sketchpad of precisely this interval. Um, so this is y equals x, this is this is y equals the cube root of 15 minus 2x, and sure as, sure as x is x, here's our root somewhere between 2 and 3. Now here's how iterative procedures work. They work by feeding in one a number into a formula, getting a result, and then feeding that number back into the formula, getting a new result, feeding that number back into the formula, and then getting a new, and we keep looping round until we get to the answer. So. On, on this, here's what we're going to be doing. I'll get that back. On this, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to feed in the first the first guess. Now we know that the answer is somewhere between two and three, so our first guess might as well might as well be uh, three for argument's sake. When we feed three in to the red formula, when I say feed into the formula, I mean the red line, this equation, feed in with the value into this, we get 15 minus 2 times 3, 15 minus 6, the cube root of 15 minus 6, or the cube root of 9, whatever that is. But I can tell you now that the cube root of 9 is that value there, 2 and a bit. How does that help us to get a second solution? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take that answer and feed it back in, feed that in as the new x value. So our x value started off being 3, the new x value is going to be 2 point something. Now, what is the, where, is the, where is that going to be on here? Well, this is the line y equals x. So this point here has the same x and y values. So it's the y value here is the x value we want to feed in a, into the iterative formula the next time round. And that's that value there. What I'm trying to say here is the number that came out when we put 3 in was 2.1 something, whatever that value there is. But that's the same as this value here because on this line here, the x and y values are the same. So this is 2.1 something, comma, sorry, 2.08 something, whatever, comma 2.08 or whatever. Then we feed that value in, and we get this out. So that's what comes out of the of the um, the red line when we feed this 2.08 value in. We get here. Then that's the next value that we feed in, and that gives us that there, and then we feed that value into the function, 
and we get that value and so on and eventually we spiral round. Now I've not explained that terribly well because it's actually quite difficult. So I'll get rid of all of this. Um, I'll get rid of all of all of what we had there. Go back to here. Uh, if I just pause it. And so our original guess was three and then when we got our original guess the next thing we did was we found where that was on this line here because this point has the same x and y values um, then we fed that new y value into the curve and that gave us that value which on the x-axis is here and that fed into the red curve here and we're just spiraling around we're getting very quickly close to the right answer and that's the principle of how this works so iterative methods the first first thing that we do is we rearrange the equation we're trying to solve to make one of the x's the subject if we can make both the, all the x's the subject then it, we can solve it using algebra which you can't do with this so we make one of the x's the subject you might say why make that x the subject rather than that one well if we made this x the subject we might well get a different solution which is probably a good a good thing but by making x the subject here we get this equation here eventually. Join the line y equals x and y equals the other one. We're trying to find when they cross, solving them simultaneously basically. We do that by chucking in an original guess into here. 3 was the original guess we used. That gives us a new answer which we then feed back in as the new guess. So the way to write this is x0 equals 3. That's the original guess x0 x1 is the first improvement and I think that was 2 point well it was about 2.08 or something. In the next clip I'll show you how to do this quickly using a calculator.